Professor Snyder, uh, two things that what Joe Biden just said, uh, he doesn't think Putin uh, expected NATO to be as united as they are. There's that. And then there's this report today in Bloomberg uh, with people in the Kremlin indicating uh, that Putin uh, is now there's, there's a big ring of doubt around Putin and around Putin's war by some of the people in the Kremlin who should be supporting him. So on, on the first issue, I think probably the biggest surprise for Putin, I mean, such a big surprise that I don't think he's really absorbed it yet, is how united the Ukrainians are. That, that's, I think, the most important factor here. And he was expecting to win this war in 72 hours, and instead we're heading towards the end of the second month. And it's been the Ukrainians, because they've resisted, who have given NATO and the West and other allies time to unite and to take serious measures. That, of course, means that everything looks different from the point of view of Moscow. And indeed, the strange thing here is how, in a certain way, Putin is the last to know. He's in this classic tyr tyrannical position where he's taking this big gamble on the basis of an ideology which is simply wrong, and it's going to be hard for people to talk to him about what's actually going on. So you mentioned the people you know, some, in, in some kind of middle circle around him who doubt this is going well. That's one group. There's another group of people who he's decided already are his enemies, people who were once fairly important in intelligence or propaganda circles, who are now reportedly in prison or under house arrest. But beyond that, you can see, and this may be the most important thing, that he doesn't actually have any friends. There's nobody really close to him. Everyone is letting him take the hit here. I mean, one way to think about this war itself is that it's, it's all on Putin, right? It's nobody else is stepping up to take responsibility. And so in that way, there's really nobody standing beside him. Everybody is not far away from him, not just physically, but he's going to take the blame for this thing uh, when it doesn't turn out the way that it's supposed to. Uh, talk about this upcoming uh, anniversary, May 9th, uh, what May 9th means both in Russia, Russian history, and what it's going to mean for this war. That's a wonderful question because it's really hard to overestimate how much the symbolism of dates matters in public culture in Russia, but also for Mr. Putin personally. He started this war on the eighth anniversary of his last anniversary in, of his last invasion of Ukraine, which is an extraordinary thing. I mean, to make a decision which is going to affect tens and tens of millions of lives on the kind of basis of sort of a political astrology of an anniversary. But May 9th is something very special because Putin's the ideology hangs on the idea that Russia is the Soviet Union, and because the Soviet Union won in 1945, therefore Russia is always right and Russia always wins, which are big claims to hang on a small war, at least a small war compared to the Second World War, and one that you're not winning. So they're going to have a tricky time on May 9th because the pressure will be on, no matter how much they try to backpedal now from May 9th, they've already mentioned it, the pressure will be on now to have some kind of victory then, something they can march and celebrate. And the Ukrainians know this too, and this is just one more reason for them to be determined not to have, not to let the Russians have something to celebrate. Let's listen to what uh, Leon Panetta, uh, former CIA director, said today about the situation. I think the, the most important mission right now is to do whatever is necessary to provide the weapons to the Ukrainians so that they can stop uh, the Russian advance in Donbas. Uh, if they can successfully stop that advance, uh, that will be another defeat for the Russians uh, and a real signal to Putin that it's time to leave. Uh, I think that's the primary mission right now. And that's someone who has advised presidents uh, from the position of being a White House chief of staff, a defense secretary, CIA director. Uh, he's been focusing on this for a long time. What, what's your reaction to that, to what he had to say? I, I think that's exactly right. I mean, what matters in Mr. Putin's mind is symbolism. And the only way to have symbolic defeats is to have real defeats on the battlefield, unfortunately. I mean, to be a better world if somehow we can be reached some other way. But the, the failure to take Kiev in 72 hours um, the, the withdrawal from around Kiev, the sinking of the flagship, the Moskva, all of these things are symbolic defeats. And if they fail to secure something by May 9th, that's another big symbolic defeat. And at some point, the symbolic defeats accumulate to a point where the charisma of the great leader starts to break. 
and you know when it happens it will it will seem natural but up to the moment when it happens we'll you know we'll be surprised we 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 can't, we won't be able to imagine it until it all comes crashing down that's the way that it goes with tyranny